All right, well, I wanted to do just a couple of more tests on the SuperCube 4000 before I went any further. And the first thing I need to do is replace the blown fuse because that thing is grenaded because of the dead short on that one FET. Now, this is a time delay 6.3 amp. I doubt you can see it, but possibly. But I'm only going to put in a slow blow or time delay 1 amp fuse for testing purposes. Uh, because I don't have the output FETs in this, and I don't think the inrush on these two caps is going to be much over one amp, uh, especially with uh, this uh, thermistor. I believe these are both PTC thermistors. So what I want to do is power this thing up, and I want to make sure that I have my full, probably 320 volts approximately, across these two FETs. And then I want to take a look at the gate drive on each FET and see if I see any oscillation. Um, there's a possibility that without the FETs actually switching the common rail, I may not see oscillation. Uh, the driver may pull it up to one point and wait for it to go negative. And if that's the case, then I'll have to throw FETs in this before I go any further. But I just want to look and see, do I see voltage and do I see any oscillation on the gate drive to each of the two FETs? So let me grab a cord, plug it into here, and hook it up to the Variac, and we'll see what happens. One moment. Okay, cord is connected, and I do have the AC input turned down to about 75 volts. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. I'm going to put my Variac on amps and just see if we get a horrendous amp draw. I don't expect anything, actually. And so far, so good. No blown parts, that's a good thing. So let's just go ahead and probe a couple of things here. 253 volts, 253, and zero. So I was trying to do something. See the voltmeter changing? That side too, that's perfect. So next I wanna hook a scope up and see if I see some kind of a pulse. So it's obviously trying to start the FETs at this point. So let me get a scope set up and get the cell phone out and get it aimed at the scope and see if we can actually see any kind of a waveform whatsoever. One moment. So I was doing my checks as to where I should put my probes to make sure I got everything just right so I don't blow up anything. And so over here I was checking source to drain and I see an open, but on this FET I'm checking source to drain and I see 0.3, well it was 0.2 ohms a second ago. So I thought I would go ahead and check this snubber diode, good and check this one, the one that we actually pulled out, 0 0.02 ohms. Is that thing shorted? Is that the whole problem? Well, I'm gonna fire up the HACO, take that diode out of the circuit once again, and then I'll check it out of circuit and see if my short goes away, because that's a potential problem. That might be the whole issue that killed these FETs was that shorted diode. So let's let this thing warm up, pull it out, give it a test. One moment. <laughs> Ah, it's stuck. Still a little tiny bit warm. Okay, get the voltmeter or the ohmmeter back into view here. There we go, so I am on ohms. I just want to see if this thing out of the circuit is actually shorted or not. That's a big 10-4, good buddy. It is a dead short. So now that that's out of the circuit, let's go ahead and get this back into view here. Try to get everything aligned where you can see everything all at once. Okay, close enough. So this was shorted a moment ago. Let's see if it is still shorted. And it is not. 3.3 megs, and there's a capacitor charging. So 1.4 megs in that direction. 
open in that direction, open in that direction. Back to volts. Let's reapply power. Source to drain voltage. And it's trying to do something. You can see it pulsing. This should be the pulse. Oh, and now I'm not seeing anything. Interesting. Am I on? No, I'm on the right leads. It's trying to start one of the two FETs. So these should be common here. Oh, no. Yeah, why am I not seeing? It is doing something. We may just have to hook the scope up and see what happens. I expected to see a pulse there. And I expected to see a pulse there because previously this was shorted and it was causing the chip to pulse both of the FETs. So if I put that in the low, low impedance mode and I get another meter out here. So effectively it's kind of shorting. So I got my other meter. Do we get a pulse on this FET now? And the question to your answer is yes, we do. So at least I can look at the waveform and tell if the driver circuitry is working correctly or not. All right, let's get the scope connected. One moment. All right, well, as you can see right there, I have the scope probe inserted into the gate drive of one of the FETs, Q1. That is in Q1. And so let's go ahead and move over to the actual scope right here. And as you can see, it is making a beautiful square wave trying to drive that FET on and off. So let's go ahead and put this into single. And it grabbed it right there. We'll put it back. It looks like a beautiful square wave. There's the money shot right there. That looks perfect. Uh, as you can tell, it's 120 kilohertz. Peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage is 16.8 volts. The duty cycle is about 50%, which is what I'd like to see. And the RMS voltage is 8.6 volts. So very happy with that. It looks absolutely perfect. Now we may have to fool this thing into driving the other FET, but I'd like to see very, very similar results. One moment. Okay, well, as you can see, I have the other voltmeter in the low impedance mode, which adds a 3000 ohm dummy load to it. And then I do have the source and the drain connected with the 3K resistor effectively. And then I have the gate on Q5. So let's zip back over to the scope and take a look at the gate drive on that guy. I'm very happy with that. Let's go into single again. 121 kilohertz, uh, only 11.8 volts peak to peak on this one. Duty cycle the same, 46%, and an RMS of 7.51 volts. They're almost mirror images. So I feel pretty confident if we replace that damper diode on there, the counter EMF diode, I think we're probably gonna be okay. Okay, it appears that Mauser does have these in stock. And they are Vichay or Vichay, however you want to pronounce it. Vishay, I'm not quite sure. I call it Vichay. But it does say soft recovery, ultra fast plastic rectifier. Um, solder dip 275, 10 seconds. Uh, it does talk about the timing on this somewhere. And it is in the nanoseconds, 50 to 75 nanosecond recovery time. And then these are the 5404s. Like I said previously, they are rated at 400 volts uh, reverse voltage, which is one of the things you really want to look at 
max RMS 280. So they should be seeing about 160 on each of the two FETs. So at this point, um, I haven't actually contacted the customer yet. I want to probably go ahead and order a set of FETs and a set of these diodes and just replace both FETs and both diodes and see if this thing goes boom or if it actually works. So I believe this is going to be part three. Uh, part one was, oops, I don't have everything. Part two was determining that the power supply driver FETs were defective. And then this is part three, uh, doing some waveform analysis to determine that, yes, one of the diodes, the uh, reverse uh, spike diode or counter EMF, whatever you want to say, damper, um, it's all basically the same thing. Diodes is defective. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it at that. This is part three. Hopefully it airs shortly after part two. And then I will get these things on order and hopefully get this thing fixed. And hopefully the customer wants to approve the estimate. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Once again, have a great day. Bye-bye. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Okay, second FET. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Well, it appears that Newark, excuse me, let's take that again. One, two, three, check, check, check.